Hello and welcome to Slice Print Roleplay. Tonight what we're going to be talking about is how to scale your models. This is a method that works great for me. I can't say that it's the best method out there, but it's worked really well for me so far, so I figured I'd do a quick video showing you guys how it works. Again, we're going to be using Mesh Mixer because it's a great program, I really like it, and because it's what I know. Also, because I've tried scaling models in my slicer, like in Cura, and I found that there are times, especially when you're scaling a smaller model up, it will actually distort the model a little bit and leave artifacts behind. And those artifacts are just kind of little floating bits in the middle of nowhere that Cura thinks are part of the model and it tries to support them and just kind of turns into a mess. I've never had that issue with Mesh Mixer, so I tend to use it for all of my model editing, as you guys know by now. So we're going to go to Import. And then it's going to bring up uh, the folder I've selected here that has three files in here. We're going to start with this one called Elfspear, which is the full file name is, I believe, Elfspear Maiden, uh, which is made by Onmyoji. Here's their Patreon page. They have some really cool models, as you can see here. I will definitely have a link for both the model and their Patreon page in the description down below. So we're going to go back over to Mesh Mixer here, select that model and bring them in. And then once we get them in here, you'll see that they are drunk. Um, so all you got to do to sober them up a little bit is just grab transform. We're going to grab the red slider here, bring it out into this circle out here, use the tick marks to go to 90 degrees, hit accept. Then we're going to hit align. So it brings it up on the build plate, accept again. So here you get a better look at the model. It's a pretty great model. It's awesome. I specifically chose this model because of the spear, but we'll get into that in a minute. So. You, looking at this model, you don't really have a great idea of its scale. You can kind of look at it against the build plate, but that's not super easy to kind of figure out a scale from there. It's not a very efficient method. So you could say, well, I know that a lot of models out there are 32 millimeters, so I'm just going to put it at 32 and hope for the best. So let's say you do that. You put it at 32 millimeters. And just for fun, I'm going to leave this unselected so you guys can see what happens. If I hit accept, it's going to stretch this model all out because it's only increasing the size in one direction. So you're having an issue here where it's not stretching it proportionally. And the only time you want to use that feature is if you were going to be stretching out like a cylinder or something that had uh, solid edges like that, that was uniform. So we're going to hit control Z until we get back to a point where this model is now standing up again, except now we're going to go to transform and we're going to hit uniform scaling. So like I said, you just assume that 32 millimeters is going to work for you because you know that's what a lot of models are. So you can accept, it's going to shrink down through the build plate because it brings it up from the center of its origin rather than the feet. So we're going to hit a line again, easy enough to take care of. So there you go. You print this model and you think you're good. You're at 32 millimeters, everything's perfectly fine. But what happens if you print this model out and you find that it's too small or too big or there's something off about it and you didn't, it doesn't really quite fit the physicality or, or the size of your model that you were looking for to fit in with the other ones that you have in the group. So what do you do? Well, that's when you call the sergeant in. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to uh, import. Uh, we're going to hit append because we don't want to replace the model. We're going to bring in Sergeant Scalesby. This is a really cool model. Um, it's more of a tool than it is a model that you're going to be printing with. And it is made by Dutch Mogul. Here is their Patreon for uh, part of the company that he started called Ilgotten Games. They have a bunch of really cool models as well as some actual um, game systems like Pocket Tactics, I believe, is one of theirs. Really cool stuff. Definitely check them out. Again, I'll have this all in the description down below. So this is a really cool tool that you can use to kind of get a reference for your models. These are not exact sizes, so I believe that 32 is actually somewhere closer to like 34, 36 millimeters. 28 is a little closer to 32 millimeters. So if you're looking for it to be exact, you can scale them down a little bit. But I'm going to go with 32 because that works for me. Bring this guy in and you'll see, hopefully once he pops in here, he's in the wrong orientation, which bothers me because I am very particular about how my models set. So we're going to change that real quick. I'm going to spin them around Oop, too far. 180 degrees. Oop, there we go. All right. So we're going to move them over to the side here and we can take a look at this model. So like I said, you can see when I, um, now that I hit transform, you can see it's actually 36. It's almost 37 millimeters tall. And that's just to, like I said, these, these are more for giving you a reference. Uh, than they are to be exact. If you wanted them to be exact, just kind of play around with them and figure out, like I said, I believe the um, 28 millimeter model is actually 32 millimeters tall. So it usually goes from like, I think it's their eyes is the regulation that a lot of people use rather than the top of their head. But in any case, you can see that this model is indeed 32 millimeters tall. However, 
it is not the model that is 32 millimeter, or it's not the, the top of the character that's 32 millimeters tall, it's the top of their spear. That's why I picked this model because it's kind of misleading. When you put 32 millimeters, you're thinking that this model is going to be 32 millimeters tall. And the model is, but not necessarily the physical body of the character. It's just going to be their spear. So what you actually want to do and why Scalesby is so helpful, I would want this to be a little bit smaller, but not this small because it's an elf. I kind of want it to be um, really thin and, and look um, quick and, and very light. So I'm going to go to transform and rather than using the static numbers here, what I'm going to do is just grab this little um, white square in the center here and I'm going to drag outward. And remember that as we're dragging this out, their feet are going down through the build plate too. So I'm going to put her right about there, I think. Hit accept and hit align. All right. So that looks pretty good to me. I like that. And that makes the model probably, I'm going to guess and say somewhere closer to 40 millimeters. 41, yeah because of the top of that spear, like I said, again, it's gonna be up here. So there you're gonna have this model, the physical model is actually much closer to the 32 or, or maybe you know somewhere in that range. Again, I personally don't get too hung up on things being exact because I like for my models to have some variety. So, you know, just like you're going to look at a room full of people, they're not all going to be the exact same size. They're not all regulation people. You're going to have uh, some disparity and some, some uniform, uh, uniqueness there. Um, so I like doing that in my models too. I don't really, I don't worry so much about doing exact measurements. I just kind of get them close. And if this were like an orc or a big barbarian character or Goliath, I would probably scale them up a little taller. Something, you know, the model itself, the actual, the character itself, I would probably scale up to like 38 or maybe even 40 millimeters, depending on the, the race and the character. So that's roughly how you would do that for uh, this model here. Like I said, Scalesby, super useful. Definitely check it out, highly recommend. Um, but yeah, that's the easiest way that I've found um, to scale your models up and, and have a good idea of knowing what they're gonna look like when you print them, knowing that they're gonna be the right size, though, or at least close to um, the size they're gonna be for the rest of your model, so you don't have one that you print out expecting it to be a full-size model and find out that you can only use it for a dwarf or something like that. But just for fun, I'm also gonna show you guys a different model here. So we're gonna hit accept, gonna get rid of scales B. You know what, we'll leave scales B. We'll get rid of this elf. So here we're going to bring in another model. I'm going to hit append again, not replace. We're going to go back out to this main folder, and we're going to bring in a bullet. Classic D&D &D monster. Okay, so when this comes up, what it's asking basically is that it found that the model that we're bringing in is of a different size, whether it's a lot bigger or a lot smaller than the model we already have. So it's asking if we want to bring this model in and have it automatically try to guess the right size for the model to fit with this one. It's, Mesh Mixer is decent at this, but it's not great. And I tend, like I said, I, I want these models to be a specific size. So I'm going to say no. So it brings the model in at whatever size it's set for. We got Scalesby here as our reference, and it is massive. So what we're going to do again, same thing we did with the elf. We're going to click on edit, transform, do the exact same thing. Go find the tick marks here. Uh, there they are, 90 degrees. There it is. Accept. And then this one's going to run a little slower because it's a bit bigger. And I don't have the best computer. I'm sorry, guys. So, um, again, I'm going to pull it out a little bit so we can take a look at it. So that size, honestly, I would probably print that. It would work fine. It looks a decent size. Like, it's it's pretty decent. Um, it's probably the size in my head that a bullet would probably be. But if this was something like a dragon or something you really wanted to be massive and imposing, you could just do the exact same thing that we did with the elf. You could grab this white square here and pull out and make this thing, you could go crazy, fill up your build plate if you want. So we're gonna hit accept, go back to align again and make sure that it's standing at the right spot. And there you go. So that would barely, if I guessed correctly, yeah, so that's barely gonna fit on my build plate, maybe not even once I get supports going, but I can diagonal, put it diagonally and it'll fit. So there you go. He's roughly the size of like one of his feet then. So that's how you would scale up a, uh, a boss model or a bigger model like that. Same process, just thought it might be fun to show you guys, and I could show off this really cool model. This model is by uh, Yasashi. I believe that's how you pronounce that. If I'm wrong, please let me know in the comments below. But again, awesome Patreon, um, awesome models, jump on it for sure. It'll be down in the description below. 
I'm going to give a shout out to anybody that I use models for. And if I ever forget, it's one of my personal rules that anytime you use a model or you show off a model or a print, always, always put in links to that artist because it's just, it's just the polite thing to do. So if I ever forget, guys, please catch me on it. So yeah, there you go, guys. That's the easiest way that I know how to scale up your models and have them have a pretty good idea what they're going to be whenever you print them out. Scalesby is an awesome tool. Got to thank Dutch Mogul again for it. Super awesome. And uh, yeah, hopefully these videos have been really helpful for you guys. If you like them, please hit that subscribe button, like the video, and uh, consider jumping on our Facebook page. It's a growing community of D&D &D players and 3D printers, and uh, it's a cool place to go and get ideas for your next printing project, or if you want to show off your paint job on your minis, or really anything, just jump on there and, and let us know what you're working on. I've been uh, posting a lot of D&D stuff lately, and hopefully I'm going to be posting some ideas for uh, some different items and things that I'm working on right now. But all right, guys, until the next time, have a good one.